Executive Director of Klima 2020, a climate consultancy firm based in Norway. Sven, thank you so much indeed for your time. You know, going back to that Desertec project, it was going to cost roughly, they guessed, about $500 billion, right, to provide Europe with 20% of its electricity by 2050. Are there any similar plans currently at the moment to harness solar energy or hydroelectric power on such a huge scale? Uh, maybe not exactly like that, but there is um, a lot of initiatives and there is uh, a lot of availability of renewable energy. So the point is to come up with a policy that makes it possible to uh, develop it. So uh, one example is the North Sea. Uh, actually, this year or next year, the investments in um, in <coughs> Uh, wind energy offshore will be higher than the investments in oil and gas in the in the North Sea. So again, the problem is not availability or um, or uh, renewable uh, energy, but I think the, the the main obstacle is the subsidizes. You know, the uh, fossil subsidizes are four times higher than the renewable subsidizes. And if we add the uh, damage to the environment that comes from fossil pollution, it is unbelievable 6% of the global GNP. So if we, um, in a way, uh, stopped the fossil subsidizes and put a real price on pollution, then uh, the shift would come probably fast enough to reach the international climate goals. Sure, and that is uh, one of the points that Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General, makes regularly about also taxing fossil fuel industries. What can the rest of the world learn from your country? If there's an economic calculation to be made when considering the shift from fossil to renewable, what is Norway's experience? Well, you know, we, we, we have done very well. Um, and I think the, the key word here is good governance. When we started uh, to uh, uh, power Norway with um, hydropower 100 years ago, the government ensured that uh, electricity would be available in an affordable way to both the industry and the, and the people. And when the oil uh, started to be explored 50 years ago, we uh, uh, built up a tax regime that now made it possible that today we have the biggest oil or pension fund in the world. And the North Sea is not the biggest um, uh, biggest uh, oil field in the world, but through good governance, we have managed to let this wealth be available to the Norwegian uh, people. And as a curiosity, I should mention that when we when we started uh, the the oil age, there was a bid from an oil company. They wanted to buy all rights in the Norwegian part of the North Sea for one million dollars. Right. Okay. So, when you look around the world and you see all of these projects that show that the ability is there to move to renewable energy, I mean, in South Korea, they built a massive. A uh, bicycle path that is covered with solar panels. Here in Istanbul, a student at a university has designed a kind of, uh, uh, I don't know exactly how to know, know how to describe it, but it's a kind of a funnel uh, that has panels that rotate as the buses go past the panels, and that energy provides electricity to households. There are so many, there, there are geothermal greenhouses in Iceland that uh, can yeah. produce food all year round. What are you most impressed by when you see these various projects? You know, there is a lot of these in innovations. So again, uh, we can solve our problem if we <coughs> if we manage in the in the right way. <coughs> but if I, I should select one example as we are discussing oil versus renewable. <coughs> Let me take the example again from from Norway and Denmark. Because Norway's biggest company, Equinor, is an oil company with a very, very small component of uh, renewable energy. And in Denmark, there is a company called Ørsted that was an oil and gas company, but some years ago decided to go 100% renewable. They are now Denmark's biggest company, 
and uh, the value, uh, uh, the market value of Equinor and Ørsted is now more or less the same. And you know, the, the oil is going down and the renewable is going up. So that is an extremely interesting example on uh, on uh, good business development. Sure. And if I'm, and if I could take another example and and uh, not be modest, I could take it actually from Norway because you know uh, Norway in Norway now more than half of the new uh, new cars are uh, sold in the market are. Um, electric uh, vehicles and that is a world record and the reason is not that we in Norway are more environmentally friendly than other people in the world but it it is here the Norwegian politicians that has put up incentives that make it uh, interesting for us to uh, go electric with transport so this is uh, just a proof that policy works and uh, but without policy we don't get a green shift Sven Tveitdal, thank you so much indeed, Sven. Uh, take care and thanks for joining us on the News Hour.